lot of uh, your work done outside uh, before the rains. Uh, we've got a little echo here this morning, and uh, we're working on it a little bit. In fact, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. A personal touch, a high level of trust. Whether it's checking and savings accounts, personal or business loans, or our local friendly service. That's what Troy Bank and Trust customers expect. But now we offer more. Free identity theft protection for our new and existing customers. Protecting your family's time, money, and good name from identity theft. Because protecting your identity is now a big part of our identity. At the Piggly Wiggly, we proudly support our local farmers and bring you the best they have to offer, all at cost plus 10%. When you shop local, you reinvest in your community. Remember, buy local, shop local. Piggly Wiggly, local since forever. Trojan Auto Parts of Troy, home of Napa Know How. Stop by and see owners Mike and Melissa Kilcrease and their Napa Know How team with over 100 years of combined experience. We're the only locally owned parts store in Pike County and we're fully stocked and ready to serve you. We pride ourselves on being your go to parts store, not only for the simple items, but we specialize in those hard to find items as well. Trojan Auto Parts, the right part at the right price at the right time. Napa, a name you've trusted here in Troy since 1945. Discounts, big selection, and big, really big deals. It's the big pre-owned sale. Only at Premier Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Pre-owned vehicles. Started at $29.95. Over 50 vehicles. Under $15,000. $29 down. And you can drive today. Or take advantage of payments. Starting at $99 a month. That's $29 down. And payments starting as low as $99. From Montgomery to Dothan. The best pre-owned deal. Are at Premier Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Or online at PremierChrysler.com. Nobody beats a Premier deal. Nobody. At Marguerite's, we've been designing and crafting custom jewelry for four generations. It's an art for master jewelers. There's really no room for error. It doesn't matter how big the diamond is. You don't expect anything less than perfection. What matters is quality, beauty, and value. After all these decades, your engagement ring is still our greatest pride. Marguerite's Exquisite Jewelry. Well, have you seen him? Well, I mean, I've just seen pictures of him the way he looks. It's kind of Back to our show, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Mike Amos has joined us from uh, uh, Northwest Florida. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing well. I uh, survived uh, about 15 hours of delays on Thursday trying to get to Las Vegas. It was uh, one of the longer days I've ever experienced in my life. We had a least a 10 hour delay in Panama City trying to get on our plane. Dude. All right, so uh, let, let's start off. What, what time did you get to the airport uh, uh, on uh, pri uh, Friday? We got to the airport on around 9 a.m. because our plane was leaving at 10. Was to, that, uh, was that Atlanta? But of course, that front came through. With all was the that on Friday or was that on Thursday? That was on Thursday. Thursday. Oh, yeah tornadoes and strong winds so uh we were supposed to fly out at 10 our flight was delayed probably 12 different times oh boy and then uh we finally had to change flights to like the last flight of the day going out to atlanta thank goodness we were able to get on that through delta and we'll never fly again <laughs> uh, we finally got on the plane around seven and we had changed our flight, thank goodness, to Vegas to the last flight out of Atlanta, which was going to be at uh, around 10 o'clock. Uh, the last flight out of... Around 9 o'clock their time. Um, this is on Delta, at least. There's plenty yeah. of other flights going to Vegas on different airlines. But anyway, that flight got delayed another three and a half hours. So we finally left Atlanta about 12.30, I think, and made it to Vegas. Um, at uh, 2 a.m. in the morning. Boy, oh boy. So you started yeah, off... It was, uh, it was probably the most frustrating, longest day I've ever spent at airports. I don't know how people ever do layovers and delays because it was just an absolute nightmare. Yeah. Well, all right. You started at exactly what time? I started at 9 a.m. in the morning, central time, 
and then got to Vegas at 2 a.m., which would have been 4 a.m. Central Time. So if you look at that, it was about 19 hours yeah. in airports or on planes for a day. And it, it doesn't sound like fun. You're exactly right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the worst thing about it was, like, literally, our, 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 we, we were almost about to get on that plane at 10. They were circling the airport trying to land, and at the last second they came out on, on the speaker and and said they couldn't land. They were going to have to divert them to Tallahassee. Oh, boy. And my wife said, well, Tallahassee looks like it's going to be rougher than anywhere. And then they had to divert them to Jacksonville. <laughs> and then they had mechanical oh, issues. And then by the time they tried to get them back to um, the airport in Panama City, their uh, flight uh, time was up, so they couldn't fly anymore the rest of the day. I mean, it was just, it was just one crazy thing after another. Yeah. And... I will say this, if I was not meeting friends and, you know, had all these things planned and booked up ready in Vegas, I probably would not have gone, but, you know, it ended up being all right. You know, we still had three nights, even though one of the nights started at 2 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> uh, was that, was that t there 2 a.m. in the morning, their yeah, time? it was 2 a.m. in the morning in Vegas. Of course, Vegas is still rock and roll. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, normal time during the day. It doesn't sleep. You're right. Mm -hmm. But you did have fun. Uh, we, did you we bring? Had, we had great. We had great weather. Though. I mean, every day it was around 68 and sunny. It blows at night. We're like 42, 44, and it was just thousands of thousands of people. Every casino. I probably went to 10 different casinos. So it was a fun trip. I hope you won some money. Yeah, a little bit here and there. I mean, it was. Uh, you just mostly you know, play was, blackjack, or what did you do? Yeah, I play blackjack, and then I play craps. Um, not craps, but I play roulette. Um, you know, I like to play outside on roulette, 1 through 18, red, black, odd, even, 18 through 36. Yeah. I play that, and then, uh, you know, my wife doesn't even, I mean, doesn't even like to play. And then Carolyn, another girl that was with us, you know, friends from Birmingham. She, oh, did she, did Carolyn come? You should have invited me since Carolyn was going to be down uh, there. Not Carolyn, Carolyn. Oh, okay. Yeah, Carolyn, <laughs> were there. But uh, they usually stay at the win and the encore, so we went to the win and the encore. Boy, those are nice casinos, too. Yeah. It's something else. It's just a lot to do. We went downtown to Old Vegas and walked around Fremont Street where all the zip lines are above your head and, you know, all the different, you know, it's kind of like a bourbon street for Vegas, all kinds yeah. of, you know, stuff going on throughout, you know, shows going on. And and I, I think you can get, stuff going on. I think over there, uh, the Golden Nugget, uh, I think you can play one deck uh, blackjack. Which is yeah, unusual. Well, everything around there is, is a lot cheaper, especially uh, you know. You well, know, what I'm saying, you know, you don't see one deck. You 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 normally see at least two decks and sometimes five and seven decks. You know, in a blackjack yeah. game. Yeah, we saw Van Morrison, who uh, you know is a singer. Everybody you know, you know has always liked. He was kind of a a big time act. You know, he's known for the song "Brown Eyed Girl." But, uh, you know, has several number one hits and won several Grammys and is a legendary performer. And at 74 years old, he played two hours straight and had an unbelievable band and yeah. put on a great show at Caesars Palace. It was sold out, 4,000 seats. Yeah, boy, that was something. That was something. And, of course, who were some other act, uh, acts out there that you uh, didn't get to see but was going on? I mean, Aerosmith was playing um, in the hotel. Wayne Newton was playing, but I didn't want to see Wayne Newton. Wayne Newton's been out there forever, you know? Yeah, I mean, there's, there was tons of bands and stuff out there. Doobie Brothers were playing. Um, the, uh, shoot, uh, a bunch of other, like, 80s bands, stuff like that. I mean, there's also always acts going on. You had uh, a bunch of... Uh, other acts going on. We're staying next to T-Mobile Arena, and the Vegas Knights hockey team was playing in that 20,000-seat arena right next to the hotel. And everywhere you went, they had on hockey jerseys, and women have on, had on hockey T-shirts. And I mean, there was just fans mm. everywhere. You know, hockey um, is big. So apparently, uh, apparently, when hockey's in town, there they've only had a team for like two years. Mm. But the first year, they went to the Stanley Cup, and it's it's a big event in Vegas. I can't imagine when the Raiders. I, I got the cab driver tickets by the new stadium. It's going to be 70,000 seats. It is really nice. 
Seventy thousand. That is a bunch. Yeah, but it's gonna be indoor or outdoor. Outdoor. I mean, well, I mean. Yeah, Vegas has great weather. I mean, they'll have a top though, won't they? You don't think they'll have a top? No, they won't have a roof in Vegas. Yeah. In Vegas, Las Vegas, Las, it's called Lost Wages, Mike, Nevada, not Las yeah, Vegas. Yeah, I'll tell you what, every time you go down there, they're building a brand new <laughs> casino bigger than the next one. It's just unbelievable. That means everybody's losing. <laughs> the, amount, the amount of restaurants inside these casinos and then the amount of bars you can go to, I mean, it's just unbelievable. And it's just each one has something different. And then all the celebrity chefs, I mean, my wife loves all the cooking shows and you know, a celebrity chef from here is there at this casino, and there's no one at this casino. I mean, I mean, it's like a food paradise for people. What's the famous what's chef? The, was he there, the famous one? You know, he was in China when I was there. Wolfgang. Uh, uh, yeah, we, 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 we bought right by Wolfgang Pugs. Yeah, okay. Uh, you know, I, I ate at his restaurant in China. That's been, gosh, five years ago. I mean, we had, we had great... Great food. We went to famous uh, Joe's seafood restaurant, seafood steak, and uh, and stone crab. And uh, you know, it's stone crab season, so you know we got stone crab, and then I got an unbelievable fillet, and you know, just the sides are all huge when they come out. And I mean, it was you know I had to get a reservation, and then there's a line out the door, probably like 50 deep to get in there, but. Crazy thing is, there's probably about another six or seven restaurants just in Caesar's Palace. We got lost walking yeah. around Caesar's Palace. Well, yeah, was Nero's? Did Palace you see is. Nero's, Mike? Uh, I, I made, uh, that was one of my favorite restaurants over the years. Nero's. I don't, if, I don't know if we passed that one or not, but I mean, I mean, Caesar's Palace is so huge, and then they have the sky painted on the ceiling for about a mile. Yeah, that is beautiful. Outside, That's right. Walking around, yeah. Yeah, Caesar's Palace is still the, one of the places to go, no question about it. But then we went to the Venetian the next night, and uh, it's about as one, of, it's about as beautiful as Caesar's Palace. Oh yeah. So it's, it, they, that's where they have the gondola ride. Yeah. <laughs> what is the nearest? Uh, we went by La Bellagio and saw the fountains, and we saw the uh, the volcano erupt at the Mirage. You know, we're seeing all that. Just did you see? Did before. you see the the shipwreck? Why, 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 did you? you, know, you we didn't go to Treasure Island, but that was right across the way. Yeah. That's it's just, uh, uh, it, it, it's just it's just crazy. Every time you go, you just you can't believe how big it is and how much you can do. Yeah. And uh, you, you're right. I mean, you if, could, you, if you go just to go to great <laughs> restaurants, I mean, that's what we do most of the time. I mean, you know, I play a little bit, but not near as much as I used to. So. It's just a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. the sports books, of course, are everywhere. If you want to watch basketball games, I, yeah, I was wondering you could have actually we, played we Troy. Were, you could have played Troy if you got out there soon enough, wouldn't yeah. you? Oh no, I was out there soon enough. I just we were too busy doing other things on Friday night. It was, you know, our, what was that? What was the line on Troy out there? Do you know? I, I didn't even see it. I, I would have to look. You know, we were out. It was our anniversary that night, yeah. so that's when we went to dinner. Well, I tell you what, I want to compliment uh, uh, Brent Jones and the AD and. Uh, and all his staff, uh, what a wonderful, wonderful job they did on Friday night. We lost the ball game uh, in a close one. Troy did not, I bet Troy didn't shoot 25%. It was terrible, uh, the, their shooting percentage. But it was a great game, and they had 4,500 people at the game, Mike. Right? Well, they must have played decent, because they came back at the very end and had a chance to win. Yeah, oh, they did, they did. And, and, uh, uh, South Alabama didn't shoot very well either. Tell you what South Alabama did, though, was shoot well from the free throw line. And then they had about a six five center that looked like a linebacker. And every time he went for the yeah, bat... Uh, a jaw. Every time they got... What's his last name? A jaw. So he's a he's foreigner, been, you think, or what? I don't know if he's a foreigner, but he's been there for several years. Well, I tell you what, once he got the ball and headed to the hoop, he, he was going to either get score, he was going to either score, uh, or he's going to get uh, foul or go, score and get foul. So uh, he scored twenty six, I think. You know, he was he, he was he was good. If Troy well, had Troy one guy like him, guys, you know, they lost the kid out of uh, the Williams kid out of Birmingham, and that's really been the biggest factor yeah. for the whole season. Was he a senior, or does, could he come back and play? Okay, but he's he's out for the whole year, though. Is that right? Yeah, that's what you 
streets all day. Is that Williams? Yeah. Yeah, he's out. I didn't know what classification he was. South Alabama was a four-point favorite in Vegas, and they won by four points, so they pushed. Yeah. And um, uh, you could have watched it on TV, too. You know, it was yeah, nationally, it too. nationally televised game. A lot of people, uh, I heard from a lot of people that did see it. And, uh, yeah, Troy Falls to 9 and 16. South Alabama's having a pretty good year. They're 14 and 11. Ricky Ray, uh, their coach they got from Nichols State, has done a really good job there. You know, I watched him, and, you know, his top assistant uh, coached at Troy last year. You know, coached at Troy and, and did a great job. That's well, right. yeah, he, he coached with him last year too in his first year. He needs to get a suit. He needs to get a. He needs to get a suit that'll fit him. I've never seen a suit so small on somebody in my life. But uh, Coach Cross, you know, he's doing all he can with what he's got left. I mean, he's got so many injuries, and you know, it's just one of those type of things that Troy. We talked months ago. It was going to be lucky to get to ten wins, and they're at nine. So surely they'll win another one before the season's over and get to ten. Yeah. Uh, hopefully they will too, but no, oh, no, Chip no. Lindsay, uh, Chip Lindsay was <coughs> a, a basketball jersey. He did that, and he said he said over there the entire game, and that's the game. I thought it was a wonderful, wonderful act of sportsmanship. You know, uh, Coach Cross did that for him in football uh, at a football game, and yeah, um, Coach Cross looked like he could play. <laughs> yeah, I tell you. Well, I tell you, uh, Coach um, Lindsay's in good shape too. He and I got to talk, and uh, they're going to start spring practice the last weekend of this month. And uh, they, uh, uh, he told me when the spring game was going to be, and I can't remember exactly the uh, the dates on it. But uh, we're excited about football, and he's excited. And, uh, you know, he didn't have to sign a single person on the second round. Can you believe that? Troy had 24 commitments, and he, they signed every one of them. That tells you something right there, Mike. Well, it's, it's, it's basically, you know, good job by their staff and, you know, whoever's leading them in recruiting as far as making sure that these guys are committed the first go-around where they can move on and get ready for the 2021 class. So. Oh, yeah. Well, most, most everyone will start about the same time, and, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, yeah, I think, I think the uh, 8 day not 8 day game, the C day game will be uh, April 4th, is what I was reading. Yeah. Now, he also had two uh, players that came uh, uh, as, as transfers. He got a transfer from Iowa and a transfer from uh, Auburn. Yeah, the Auburn. defense man also love it from yeah. Auburn. See, that guy from Auburn's a real deal. Uh, I don't yeah, know. Uh, yeah, he had, he had 20 tackles for yeah. Auburn one year I, before. Uh, I know. I was wondering what happened. Did he just have one year of eligibility? Uh, he's got two, from what I read. Yeah, Williams, the kid out of Brubaker Tech, led Troy in basketball the other night. Problem was small, could not get a shot off. He uh, he did not perform well, and he's been playing great for Troy. Well, I tell you, uh, he, not small, but uh, Gordon. Yeah, that's right. He didn't have a good game. Uh, the guy, the young man from Montgomery, though, Mike. Um, they didn't get the ball to him enough. I mean, uh, you know, he's a he's a, he's a three point shooter. He, he's not a big physical guy, but he's a. He, I was watching him during warm ups. Mike, he can jump out of the gym. I mean, he. he I, how tall is he? Six one, uh, six yeah, two, six yeah. one, and he can flat foot dunk it. As, 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 uh, it's amazing how well some of these kids jump. You know. Yeah, it's Desmond Williams. <laughs> Can you imagine how bad these guys Yeah, I know it. Been? I know he it. He went to Paul Williams and the left kid out of Texas and he, in the play. And that, yeah. you know, these kids nowadays, they don't want to be redshirted. They don't want to be redshirted. Yeah, Darian Adams came back. Of course, he's a kid out of Carver. And, you know, yeah. he was leading the team in scoring this year, but then I guess he got yeah. hurt for a couple well, of games. And, and, and he didn't shoot very well in yeah, that he game. Came back in, he came back in about <laughs> 30 minutes, but only scored seven points. And uh, Yeah, he didn't start. They didn't start him. Number four is yeah. that is that number four? 
for, yeah, for Troy. Let me tell you, he played hard. He he was all over the court. He he he. he uh, you know how you can just tell when you watch a game who's playing hard and who's not? He's one you could definitely tell was playing hard. Yeah, he's, he's Troy's only senior, and he's really just has lost his shot this year. I know he had injuries with his knee. He was that Norman kid. He just he just never could, you know, he was never able to bounce back and shoot threes this year. I mean, sometimes he'd come in games last year, and he well, was really He hard. did. He, he played, yeah, players. yeah, and he got a few of them uh, uh, Friday, and um uh, 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 yeah, I agree with you though. The same way, no question about yeah, it. Yeah, he's the only senior on this team. <laughs> so, recruiting wise, I don't know how Coach Cross will go about that. I don't know if some of these guys will <clears throat> kind of suggest that maybe you might want to go somewhere else or transfer out, or you know, because he's not going to bring in too many many guys off this team, only having one senior. I know it. So you're kind of stuck with what you got again. I know it, and I like. I don't like it. Guys transfer. Yeah. Uh, hopefully the six nine kid can come back, and uh, uh, they need him badly. I say they need the kid from Pike County High School. Oh That's boy, awesome. you're right, and he'd bring a crowd too. He's a outstanding player, six foot eight guard. He could play guard. Well, he's not a guard at, at, at Pike County, but he'd be a, he'd be a forward. <laughs> yeah, he could he could play. You're right. No question about it. We I uh, hope you're doing well this morning. Of course, the uh, show is brought to you by All-Star Collision, located right between uh, uh, Premier Dodge Chrysler Jeep and also uh, uh, by, uh, Bill Jackson Ford on the bypass. And uh, uh, they're about as good as you can uh, get when it comes to uh, repairing uh, uh, your vehicle, if it's in a wreck or... Um, are, are just um, uh, taking care of a few little dents and uh, you can make it look good again, I promise you. First car, Haba Bank. want to say good morning to Grady Caps and all the great folks represent First Car, Haba Bank, located uh, just off of the bypass right down the street from uh, uh, your favorite place, Mike. They buy groceries. <laughs> Your favorite place to buy groceries. In, in Troy, Publix? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, he said it not in, uh, you know, they're not one of our sponsors, but uh, I know that I knew that you would say something about that. I was oh, in, that's, all, that's all you have down here on, on 30A. You've got one uh, in Watercolor, Seaside right there, and then you've got one on 98. Of course, I was, uh, I was pulling out of it uh, <clears throat> when I first moved down, and after a couple months, I was... I had a great day on the beach, and I was uh, sitting there and at the light, turning left. The next thing I know, two cars collide on 98, then they collide into me. Yeah. So I always, always go to that Publix, and uh, every single time I get to that light, I uh, <laughs> don't have good memories. Oh, yeah, yeah. I agree, I agree. How's the uh, uh, red bar coming along? Oh, it's, it's really looking great. I mean, it's, uh, you know, they're talking about in June opening up, and I wouldn't be sh you know, surprised at all. I mean, that's... Uh, Definitely, I think, a possibility the way it's going up right now. Has it been enlarged, Mike, or will it be the same size? It's like on, it's higher up, you know, because it's kind of on blocks, I'd say. Yeah. The building was so old, and it looks a little taller, but the, the design and the, the blueprint's the exact same. It's going to look the exact same. Really? Gosh. Yeah, I mean, it, it's looking really good. It's coming up. I mean, yeah. shoot, I think yesterday down here was around 71. And, I hope uh, they enlarged their bathrooms. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think they are going to make Nicer, yeah. but, uh, they had the most public bathrooms uh, that I've ever seen. But uh, we, uh, you know, would, you know, we're excited it's going to open, and then you know, some, in, in some ways we're not excited. You know, having kids and enjoying the calmness of uh, no red bar and, and less traffic. Uh, I mean, probably for the next six months to a year, once they open back up, they'll be just. Yeah crazy down here with traffic again and people but, trying to get on their knees. If you're not familiar with the Red Bar, it's one of the most popular uh, restaurants uh, in uh, off 38. Uh, all the restaurants in the south, southeast. Yeah, and of course, uh, it's it's owned by a young man from Belgium, and uh, you've got to be good friends with him. Is that right? Well, I mean, I'm the only... Coffee, uh, coffee! From coming down to over the years, Oliver Petit, uh, his father, Louis Petit, um, uh, you know, that's 
Louis Louis as well, which is off 98. That's so. the same menu pretty much, isn't it? It's the same menu, but expanded. Louis Louis has some dishes that the Red Bar doesn't have. Yeah. It has more more options, I would say. And of course... Um, uh, yeah, every, everything you could get at the Red Bar, you could get there. Yeah. And, uh, and that's one thing. I mean, if you, if you like my wife and I and our kids, we've gone down there just because we miss, you know, having dinner. Only problem down there, though, that the Red Bar was so much better. And uh, we loved actually more than dinner was their lunch. We loved the Red Bar lunch. Oh, yeah. And they're not open for lunch with Blue Lewis. I know, it, but I, I, now, I tell you, you're right. It's... They're, only, they're only open for, for, you know, for dinner. And, you know, we love the grouper fingers. Um, you know, and, of course, the Mai Mai sandwiches were great down there. And their gumbo is, is amazing. And tuna dip, of course, you can get that at night. But, uh... Yeah, it's, I mean, you and Mom probably went to lunch down there more than y'all went to dinner. Well, I'll tell you something that became my favorite uh, dish down there is their... Um, fish and chips. Fish, fish and chips, and ladies and gentlemen, the fish was huge cuts of grouper. I mean, everybody said, you won't, they don't even mention that it's grouper, but it is grouper, and it's probably the best selection of grouper you might find fried grouper that you'll find on the whole whole beach. Yeah, that's really good. And then, of course, you know that chicken sandwich is world renowned, and uh, and their waffles, their wonderful waffles for uh, breakfast, uh, are very were very popular. Yeah, I'm probably gonna go see our buddies Nate and Glenn at Sunnyside Grill today. I don't blame you. Go ahead and order ham and eggs for me here. Yeah? Yeah, Let me tell you why I, I like ham and eggs at, at there, because it's a real cut of ham, about like that, uh, and about an inch thick almost, and uh, it is really, really good. Need to mention uh, Troy Softball. Johnston tosses one hitter to push Troy past North Florida. So, uh, I, don't, I, I, I don't even know. I tell you what, I got a billionaire carrying me my coffee this morning. Uh, uh, thank you so much, my friend. And, uh, of course, we had a big weekend at the gala. And, Chrissy, uh, you and Benny, if you're watching this morning, uh, you did it again, my dear. They just flocked in there, and it was about as well done a, a gala a party that you'll see anywhere. Uh, uh, Steve had fr a friend come down, and uh, she couldn't get over Troy, Alabama. And, of course, uh, the food was outstanding. The band was outstanding. If you like uh, hip hop music, I like. I didn't hear hardly any fifties uh, and sixties, but the band stayed up there the entire time. I I don't remember them having a break. What kind of hip hop music they play? Well, not hip hop, not hip hop, but uh, I don't know why you call it. But they 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 had it going the entire night. Well, that's good. And uh, well, and I left. I left probably well, around I mean, eleven. I haven't, I haven't been to that party in many years, but I know a lot of people go to it. Well, it was a. a I saw quite a few of your friends, and uh, it was a lot of fun. They gave away ten thousand dollars. I don't know who the lucky winner was, but uh, uh, it was. Uh, you could, I tell you what, you've been out to the uh, Calamans, uh, arena, you know, uh, uh, arena there. Uh, uh, south of Troy. And it, it, What's it called? The uh, Cattlemen's Association? Yeah, yeah the Cattlemen's uh, Building. And, uh, man, you couldn't even hardly find a parking place. And, that, and that's a huge field in front of that facility. But uh, it was a lot of sharp people, a lot of well-dressed people, and some not very well-dressed. And, and, of course, uh, uh, it was a lot of color, uh, a lot of necklaces, a lot of bracelets, and... Uh, a lot of uh, Mardi Gras. It was it was 100% Mardi Gras, and again the food was excellent, excellent. Yeah, that's turning uh, Troy's probably one of Troy's biggest events every year. I would they guess. they had a guy uh, and they had about three or four guys carrying around a tray of freshly fried oysters, and they had a big uh, jar of uh, cocktail sauce, and what you do you uh, you would pick up the fork. That already had the oysters on it, and uh, I don't know if they gave, gave out of forks, but it was a bunch of forks uh, just on that little hors d'oeuvre there. It was wonderful food, just wonderful. Yeah, recap of Troy's softball.
off on, so they start on Friday night. They beat uh, Lipscomb out of Nashville two to zero. That's a good program too. And then they played College of Charleston. I've been there before. That's probably one of the more beautiful universities in America. They beat College of Charleston eight to three. Then they fell to West Kentucky two to three on Saturday. Boy. Then they bounced back and beat North Florida on Sunday. Uh, three to nothing. Yeah. So they're three and one to start the season. When well, how a young lady from Brantley came out, and then the other young lady from Skipperville, uh, two two of those kids from one of them was freshman of the year in the conference last year from Brantley, and then the uh, all state uh, pitcher from uh, from uh, uh, Long High School of Skipperville. Yeah, I would have to look and see. They, they, they have three top-notch pitchers on, on their staff, and uh, they might even have yeah, a minute yeah, four. Kentucky, uh, as Conference USA, so they were definitely the best team they played, so I don't know if that's a good sign that you lose to the best team you play. Um, but uh, North Florida, I wouldn't think, is a powerhouse in softball, and College of Charleston, Lipskin, I, I don't know how great they are either. So I don't know if that's a bad sign you lose to the best team you play or what. Yeah, you're right. But uh, Troy's going to be good, ladies and gentlemen. You want to get And, you know, they don't even charge well, admission. They play, some, they, they play some interesting teams in softball. I mean, they're, you know, I just mentioned some teams you don't hear about very much. But then uh, after that, they're playing Sanford and Birmingham. They'll have Kennesaw State at home. Purdue, Fort Wayne will be coming to Troy. Oh, boy. So that's the Fort Wayne branch of Purdue University. Yeah. Then Southeast Missouri State, Eastern Illinois, uh, Southern Miss, Oakland. I've never even heard of Oakland. Yeah. They're in uh, Orlando, Florida. Yeah. Uh, then they play Clemson, Stetson, Morgan State. I mean, this is just all over the map. Villanova, Nick Nick State. Yeah. I mean, of course, we know Nick Nick State from 1AA. Charlotte, uh, South Carolina. I mean, this schedule is all over the map. Yeah. They didn't get into conference play. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, a lot of these teams are on the road. You know, uh, they uh, take this. Certain, certain schools can't play because of the weather. They'll take their spring breaks down this way, and uh, it's easy to yeah, schedule. Yeah, Birmingham got, I forgot to mention that, but I saw on Facebook, Birmingham got snow, Atlanta got snow. Now tell us how, uh, let, tell us how uh, our quarterback did, Mike. I know they lost, but yeah, I didn't. I watched a, a few plays. I was watching it from the uh, – from the casino when I was having lunch. Um, I think we're in downtown at the Golden Nugget. And uh, he looked good on some of the few passes, but then I think I saw the highlights. He threw a really horrible pass for a long interception for a touchdown. Um, the Seattle Dragons and Brandon Silvers um, fell um, in their first game ever in the X6. X what is it? X That's right. You know, he played in the first game. He was a quarterback in the first game ever in that league. I guess the second go around. <laughs> so that was the, that was the second time. Oh, they, the they, you mean you mean they they won the beginning of the XFL? Yeah, the XFL came came around about shoot fifteen years ago. Yeah, or maybe twenty years ago, and now they've re reestablished it again. You know, it was only one one season the first time, and now yeah. I guess fifteen twenty years later they're back. And it's, uh, uh, they're owned by. I mean, it, it was started by a wrestler. Is that right? Well, I mean, it was started uh, by, you know, Vince McMahon. Yeah. And who is he, a promoter? Well, yeah, a promoter, owner of the WWE, WWF. Yeah. <laughs> you watch that a lot, don't you? I mean, I, I watched it when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, yeah well, I mean, you know, a lot of, you know, names, you know, is Jim Zorn. He was a former player, head coach in the NFL. Yeah. Is the uh, offense coordinator. I mean, I head coach for the Dragons. And then the office coordinator is a guy we know very well that, you know, was head coach at Oregon State for many years, was at Nebraska, had a chance to be the head coach at Alabama. Mike Raleigh's his office coordinator. Yeah, they really? Huh. Well, let me ask you this. Do uh, uh, you got any stats on uh, our quarterback? Yeah, I'm trying to pull stuff up right now. So it's going to be a second. Uh, of course, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Brandon Silver's listed as 6'3", 224. Oh, man. Brandon Silver uh, uh, out of Daphne, Alabama, or not Daphne, but Gulf Shores, <clears throat> played four years, actually played five years at Troy. He was red-shirted and gray-shirted. He was here for six seasons. And, uh, of course, he uh, 
uh, was an outstanding quarterback at Troy University here. And uh, uh, he is the starting quarterback for the Seattle team in the XFL. So uh, do, you, do you see anything? I'm just trying to pull it up. It's, it's, it's hard to find stats on stuff right now. But uh, the final score was 31-19, wasn't it? Something like that. Yeah, yeah, it was the final score. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Silvers is a guy that, you know, even back in the day, Sean Reagan would come on the show and tell you during breaks, you know, the Troy quarterback coach that, you know, this is a guy that can play the next level. I yeah. didn't believe it. I didn't either. Um, but, uh, you know, he's a guy that's in the XFL, and, and that's kind of like a feeder league to the NFL. Yeah. So... His cousin, yeah. or, or his uncle, was uh, Kerry Christensen, the guy guy that took Troy to the national championship victory in 1984. Yeah, that's right. And uh, of course, he, uh, he had some really good games for Troy Silvers did. He had some of the worst you'll ever see in your life. <laughs> I mean, I, I remember a South Alabama game that, I mean, he pretty much just lost the game throwing interceptions. Yeah. But I can remember him also going to LSU and beating the, the, the Bayou I mean, Bengals. Yeah, he played a good game, but Brown didn't make him do anything crazy in that game. That was all all Chung, really, at running back. I mean, Silver's made a few passes here and there, yeah. but you got to remember Chun was just unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, running backs, Troy uh, looks pretty sound uh, at uh, running backs coming into the spring. They really like this big back that they got from Texas A&M. And uh, can you believe A&M beat, beat Alabama out on that big guy? What do you think? Well, I mean, Jimbo Fisher's a great recruiter. It doesn't shock me. Yeah. I mean, uh, Alabama you, you uh, was... Alabama, you expect Alabama to get a guy like that. You know, out of Mississippi, they said that's the reason they hired, you know, Freddie Roach. Yeah. Um, because yeah. he was, uh, you know... At Ole Miss, and he was one of the top recruiters. Well, Alabama, did Alabama signed too, though, this second season, didn't they? On oh, no recruiting. And uh, he was six foot, the one they lost was six foot seven, 327 pounds. Uh, yeah, they lost the Jones kid out of Calera. Yeah. How do we yeah, do that? Brandon, Brandon Silver's day was marred by two interceptions, including one return for a touchdown. But the 25 year old showcase spurts of brilliance in a three touchdown day. So he threw for three touchdowns and two interceptions. Well, great, great. I don't know if he's going to lose his job or what. I don't know. I, I don't know who the backup is. The, but but I've heard that the backup has, has a, uh, uh, is uh, real close to to the head coach. So uh, um, it's, uh, it's one of those things, though, where uh, he was going up against. Uh, Cardell Jones and everybody that's an Alabama fan will never forget Cardell Jones what he did to Alabama in the playoffs for Ohio State. Of course, it helped that he had Ezekiel Elliott back there running back, but he was the third string quarterback at Ohio State. And of course, he let upset win against Alabama in the playoffs, and then of course he beat um, you know Oregon for the national championship, and uh, will always be a legend at Ohio State, even though he wasn't even a starter. Yeah. Yep, you're right. The old guy when he came against Alabama was just throwing bombs left and right. Uh, yeah, I think I remember that. <laughs> I mean, that's Urban Meyer's last national yeah. championship team. Yeah. And didn't you tell me that our buddy uh, uh, is uh, uh, coaching the quarterbacks at uh, Ohio State? Yeah, we, we said that, uh, that uh, oh, my goodness, drawing a blank. Uh, Dennis, Dennis, Corey, Corey Dennis. Corey Dennis. And uh, former Charles Simpson uh, quarterback Corey Dennis, who won uh, well, not too long ago, he was playing quarterback for Charles Simpson. Uh, he played his college ball at Georgia Tech, and uh, he ended up marrying a young lady whose father was a pretty well known college coach, uh, Urban yeah, Meyer. If you, coach, if you want to get into coaching, marrying Urban Meyer's daughter is probably a good decision. That's right, and to have a grandchild, too, is that right? Yeah, that you name that you job. that you name Troy. How about that? Yeah, they named Troy. That's right. But uh, he's a go he's a new quarterback coach at Ohio State. Is that right? Yeah, he's been an analyst uh, while Urban was there, and then Coach Day hired him full time. Coach uh, Urban Meyer, Mike, wouldn't you think that he would uh, 
make a, uh, who, who do you think he's waiting on uh, to be the next head football coach? I mean, I don't know. I mean, you know, he claims he has health issues. Of course, he had a lot of off the field. Wouldn't you say he's one of the one, uh, one of, uh, uh, he's in the top five of uh, all coaches out there right now? If you had, had a, was able to get him, wouldn't you think he'd be in the top yeah, five? but you know, he left Florida under a lot of controversy, and then he left Ohio State under a lot of controversy with his assistant coach that was, you know, basically just a crazy person, you know, all kinds of off-the-field issues and covering up a lot of, you know, horrible stuff, you know, with his family. And Urban Meyer kept him on and kept him on, even though, you know, he kind of knew what was going on. So to say, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, people that are, you know, not huge fans of what it, what he what he's done at other programs, but I don't know. I don't know what would happen. I, I could see him maybe in the NFL one day. Yeah. I just don't know if he wants to get back in college and pull around full of college yeah, stuff you're again. You're right. You're right. And that, I mean, worried he's about he's recruiting. There's no doubt about it. He's won three national <laughs> championships. I mean, he's a guy that I feel like, you know, he, he's you know doing a pretty good job. Um, you know, being a uh, college uh, analyst right now, yeah. so maybe he'll just keep on doing that. Do you think he does a good job? Yeah, I think he does pretty good for Fox. You know, it's funny, I was uh, waiting to get on my plane, and, and somehow one plane landed, I guess it was from maybe a different airport, and that was Mark Rick. Um, you saw was, Mark Rick? Uh, yeah, in a suit and tie coming off the airplane, uh, I guess heading to his car. I already lived on 38 down here, I don't know where, but... You know, oh, Georgia okay, in Panama City, okay. Yeah, the former Georgia coach, and of course the uh, yeah. coach in Miami for a little while as well. But you know, he just had a heart attack. But man, he looked good walking through the uh, through the airport. Now uh, I was getting off the plane, and we're trying to run off. You know, because we're had been in that yeah. airport so long on Thursday, we just didn't even want to see it when we got there yesterday. And trying to get in the car to get back and see the girls and turn my life. I lived there just sitting there. You know, Hall of Famer, 300 wins. Uh, you know, built a brand new. You know. Huge house in Alice Beach. Tom Glavin's just sitting in the airport. Oh, out. really? <laughs> you told me he lived there, yeah. Yeah, I've seen him several times, but I mean. He probably lives in Alice. Does he live in Alice or where? Yeah, he does, yeah. He built a huge house on the beach in Alice. We know one thing, is, we know what color it is, don't we? It's, it's colored, uh, all those Alice ones are colored right. white, yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah, it was just funny, you know, you just see you know, a little bit of everything. You know, at the airport, you probably see some country music stars come in, yeah. too. No question about it. Who are some other people that live there that you know about? I mean, there's a bunch of, you know, country music folks. I mean, they're yeah. the head guy of uh, the Florida band, uh, what is it, Florida? No, Florida, Georgia Line. They're a huge country band. No, Flo Florida, Florida, Florida. No, Florida, Florida, Georgia Line is the name of the group. Okay, yeah. Uh, the Kelly guy, who's the, there's two singers. Just two of them in the band. He lives down in Graydon. Yeah. It has a has a shop next to the Red Bar, and then you've got Lou Bryan's got a place down here. He's probably the biggest guy in country music. He's on American Idol. Lou Bryan. Uh, he'd been at Troy University, and I, I and I, uh, I I was I asked somebody one day. I said, "Who is that guy? I've never heard of him." <laughs> but that's been four or five years ago, and they said, "Oh, it's a young singer named Lou Bryan." Yeah, Lou Bryan. Jason Aldean's got a place down here, and then some folks from the big country group, Lady Annabelle, and that place is down yeah. here. And you got Shell Crow, who's a big time singer. She's down here, right next to where I live. Michael McDonald, who was a legendary singer, built his house two doors down from us. He, he sold it, uh, I guess, about five years ago, but he was down here for years. Uh -huh. uh, you know, he was the lead singer of the Doobie <laughs> Brothers as well. Um, this guy knows everything, doesn't he, ladies and gentlemen? Hey, uh, I got my own little encyclopedia right here. Not only sports, but country I music. I can't believe I'm able to communicate uh, after being in Vegas. This but, morning. ladies and gentlemen, if you think he knows country music, you ought to get my daughter on the phone, Rebecca. Rebecca Amos is probably as knowledgeable about country music as any she, she any was, person I know. She, she was back in the old old days when she yeah. did radio. I don't know if she involves it much anymore. Yeah. But at one time she did not 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 only did she know who the guy was or who the girl was, and uh, he she knew who he's married to, who they were married to, and what their children's name was. <laughs> yeah, I mean Garth Brooks and Flip Black back in 
the really good days of country music, I would say she knew them all and had pictures of all of them. Yeah, I mean, back then, give me the top five. Uh, there were a bunch of them, but uh, I, all right. I mean, all right, now, let, 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 me, let me see if I'm right. It's Clint Black, Alan Jackson. George Strait and Garth Brooks. That Boy, those were as good as you could get. That's, that's who I was going to... Uh, those five right there, you couldn't... Uh, uh, they were as good as they got. But then I'm, uh, I'm looking on uh, Facebook not too long ago, and I see uh, you know, one of my closest girlfriends growing up and pretty much our, our, our part of our family, Sean Duncan, who's uh, Sean Duncan Hell, and J.B. Hell, her husband's a big contractor. That's the last yeah. name, hell now. <laughs> I see them on Facebook at a party, and it's hosted by Clint Black and his wife, Lisa Hartman Black, who was an actress for several years in Hollywood. And uh, Clint Black and Lisa Hartman Black are having them over to their house for a party, and apparently JB had built their house. That's right. That's right. No question about it. Of course, uh, we need to mention Auburn basketball continues to amaze. They're 21 and 2. They went at the buzzer. McCormick puts a floater up, and it goes in, and they beat LSU. And then Alabama, who, of course, is uh, dealing with injury issues and somehow, some way, won at Georgia in overtime. Kyle Lewis scored 38 points for Alabama. Oh, I tell you what, he's good at. He shoots free throws. He, 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 you you file him, you're in trouble. Lane. Have you ever seen a guy so fast get into the bucket? I know, yeah, it really oh. does. He's not a real big guy either, he's a, not, but he, you're right. He was he's really good. That, he's the guy that... I left high school early last year and was 17 years old. He was the youngest kid in college basketball, and he's a sophomore. He's only 18 yeah. now. Uh -huh. But uh, he's a guy a lot of pro scouts are looking at. They think he could be a first-round pick. Yeah, so they, so he's gone after this year, you think, or what? If he, if he goes, if, 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 he's, if he's projected first round, they think he will. Yeah. But uh, he's a guy that is a really, really good young player. Yeah. Like Auburn, I tell you, they found a way to win. Uh, they were down 14 points in the second half. Uh, my daughter, your sister, Camille, called me from over there and she said they were fixing to go because Auburn was getting blown out. I hope I hope they hung around. I think they did. Yeah, they did. I saw pictures on the court and stuff. 92 to 91 in overtime, and Auburn tips it in at the buzzer, don't they? Did you know that is not a tip in is not considered a shot? Did you know that? That's oh, my that comes from my officiating. You know, uh, uh What is it considered? Well uh, it's all right, well, a shot if it goes in, isn't it? Yeah, you know, a tip in that uh, is not considered a shot, so uh you know, uh, at the end of the game, like you know, this shot was made at the buzzer. Uh it was, was yeah, I mean, you get credit with a point, though. Yeah, that's right. Um, and, um, yeah, you get credit with a point, but there's something else about it, though, that uh, uh, maybe maybe I, I got turned around a little bit on it. But uh, uh, it's, uh, all the years that I officiated, uh, tip was not considered a top, uh, shot, so uh, it would not be con uh, counted at the buzzer. So that ball, evidently, it, it was past the buzzer. Yeah. Uh, I could be wrong there, but uh, I think that's where it worked. It was a lot of people. Uh, uh, well, all right. If the ball is out of bounds, Mike, with uh, and the clock is showing one uh, or or zero. It's like, it's like zero point two yeah. seconds. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So really. If it's touched in bounds, it's automatically uh, uh, the end of play. You know what I'm saying? A shot would not count. Yeah, like 0.3 seconds. Ago, yeah, that's so where we're talking ball. about. That's where we're talking about on that tip ball. The shot would not count if it was considered a tip instead of a, a shot. But it, but it, it tipped it in and it fell. Uh, you know, I don't know how that would work. <laughs> That's what happened. It was a tip in at the buzzer, wasn't it? Well, no, no. That wasn't the situation here. This was just a floater that went in, and, and there's 0.1 seconds left. He drove the lane. Yeah. The ball bounced up, hit the rim, came back in, yeah. and scored. Mike, we've got some great basketball coming up this weekend. We also have the Archer reunion, uh, the players that played for the great John Archer back in the 50s and the 60s and part of the 70s. 
uh, will be back for their annual reunion. We do it every year, and everybody's excited about it, and we're going to have another great group. And uh, uh, all former uh, players, Mike, are going to be honored this weekend at uh, Troy's game on Saturday. And remember, that uh, time for that game has been changed. It was uh, going to be a 2 o'clock game. Now it has been moved to 6 o'clock. And uh, it's going to be uh, honoring all the former players. And I know I've got at least 30 coming in here for uh, the Archer reunion. And uh, they'll be included. Uh, they also are going to shoot around at 7 o'clock in the morning, Mike. <laughs> so that's going to be a lot fun. Of fun. I'm sure they'll have a big night before. Well, let me tell you another thing. I was going to name some players in Alabama uh, high school football that uh, decide to leave the state. So let me know if you want to hear All about it. Right, no, we'll listen uh, to it. Well, you, you got it. Let's listen to it. Yeah, this is uh, top high school players in the state of Alabama that left the state for other schools and recruiting. Uh, E.J. Williams, Central Phoenix City wide receiver, is uh, joining Justin Ross at Clemson. So another great wide receiver has left the state to play for Dabo Sweeney at Clemson, Eric Shaw, Real Town, tight end athletes going to South Carolina. Uh, Real Town had a great season. Yeah. Ewan Trussell's Eric Taylor, defense lineman, is going to LSU. Uh, Chris Abrams Drain, he's the guy that played quarterback after playing wide receiver in Spanish Sport, led him to the runner up finish, is uh, going to Missouri. Logan Smothers, Muscle Shoals quarterback. He's been committed to Nebraska for several years. He's going to Nebraska at a Muscle Shoals. D. Beckwith, Florence athlete, is going to Tennessee. Um, Jason Jones, this was a shocker. Alabama was after McKinley Jackson lost interest in uh, Jason Jones. weren't going to offer if they got Jackson. And Jones went ahead and left uh, clear Alabama going all the way to Oregon. So uh, that's kind of crazy. Um, he was running back. Yeah. Well, he was running back too, wasn't he? No, he's the guy that was six seven. Oh, three, I'm uh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, Sidney Williams, Biger, defensive back. Um, he is going to go. He flipped the last minute. Is going to play for Mike Norville at Florida State. Um, then you got a kid named Amari Pope Porter, defensive back, out of Auburn High School. Man, he's going all the way to Stanford. He, he, I tell you one thing, he's going to get a good education. I promise you that if he can stay in yeah, school. These, these are high school kids <laughs> leaving the state as far as recruiting. Linebacker Rodney Grosh out of Pleasant Grove is going to Mississippi State. Um, another huge pickup for Oregon here, Robbie Ashford, the star quarterback at Hoover High School. Of course, he also could be in a, a top two pick in the Major League Baseball draft. All right, Judge, wait a minute. His name is Robbie Ashford. Yeah, a three-year starter at, at Hoover High School. He's also a great baseball player. He's decided to go to Oregon as well. So that's two kids out of the state going to Oregon. Um, and then you got Reginald Perry, Perry, Fairfield. Of course, that's in Birmingham. Offensive lineman is going to Tennessee. Apparently, he's a basketball standout, too. He's six foot seven. Then you got uh, uh, Dazzlin Warsham, how to Hewitt Trust wide receiver. Alabama was, he originally committed to Alabama. Alabama backed off, dropped the commitment. So he was looking for a place. He ends up going to Miami. Uh, Jacoby Bryant, Hillcrest Evergreen, defensive back. He is actually heading to Kansas. So like Troy would have gone after this guy, a defensive back, and going to Kansas. Um, and you got James Robinson, Barbara Montgomery, offensive line, Tennessee. So you're seeing Pruitt getting to the state of Alabama quite a bit here. And then uh, another kid, Reggie Bracey, St. Paul, defensive back. He's going to Iowa. Uh, Jalen Stinson, Opelika, uh, defensive back. Seemed like he, Troy would have been big on him with Blackman coaching at Troy, but Stinson has decided to go to Duke, so that's a great education. Yeah, they lost him right at the last, Mike. <clears throat> but you know what? He's going to have problems. Uh, you know, anybody that goes to these uh, high, like Stanford and Duke, they, they, you're right, they'll have a hard time. Academically. Stinson, Stinson is a standout track athlete at Opelika High School. Excels in the javelin, recorded more than 200 tackles in his high school career. Oh, so he must man. be a really good player. What happened to our guy from uh, uh, Opelika? Did, did, he, did he play the whole year or did he get hurt? He got hurt again. Um, Joshua Jones, Central Phoenix City, office line, is going to Kentucky. Uh, since Cedric Johnson, Davidson, high school automobile, defensive man is going to Ole Miss. 
Uh, Brady Ward, St. Paul offensive lineman, is going to Ole Miss. Golly. Mike Petaway, Thompson wide receiver, is going to Washington State. Wow, he's leaving the 7A state championship team and going all the way out to Washington State. I'm surprised that commit did get changed to Mississippi State. Yeah, I know it. Um, that, that's really surprising there. Yeah, I know it, yeah. Then you got another kid out of Murphy of Birmingham, Jamari Butler. I um, mean, Murphy of Mobile, sorry, defensive end is going to Nebraska. Trent Howard, Briarwood Christian, he is going to play at Clemson as well. Dabo Sweeney, his dad, played together on the 92 championship team at Alabama. All right, what, what was this guy's name? Howard, Trent Howard. I guess his, yeah. his father's played at Alabama on the 92 championship team. I don't remember him, Howard. I, I don't either. Eddie Watkins, Hillcrest Evergreen. Hillcrest Evergreen again showing up here. Yeah, they got they got players down there. You're right. You, I, I, you know where he's going? West Virginia. Oh boy, who is he again? Eddie Watkins, Hillcrest Evergreen. Neil Brown's come down and what, 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 what position? What position did he did he play? Plays linebacker. Oh boy, yeah. Then a quarterback out of Central Phoenix City, Tucker Melton, quarterback. He's going a long ways away. He's going all the way to Bowling Green. I've been there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Me too. And why would he want to go there? I tell you, Troy's just loaded with quarterbacks, though. They don't. And then you, and then you mentioned this kid the other day, um, Jalen White, the all-time leading rusher in Alabama history, running back, rushed for 3,519 yards, That's 49 right. touchdowns, is going to Georgia Southern. I've heard that. that I've heard that. They, uh, I've heard though that there's some great situations here, and also uh, he was holding out on. Uh, going somewhere else so that with it, they don't know for sure that he's going to be going uh, that he's going to end up he might, have to, he might have to go to junior college first yeah might I don't know exactly and then you got another Central Phoenix City this is amazing how many Central Phoenix City guys Mike Harris I wonder why I know these guys want to go in state defensive back he's going to Baylor oh man good um, Baptist I reckon and then Daquan Johnson Flomerton and Troy lost this kid this is the kid that was at Flomerton that had committed to Troy and I'd wonder what had happened. I was looking for him. He's a star player. He played quarterback, played wide receiver, and he was heading to Troy too. And Duke comes in and gets him last week. That, that was uh, okay. They they talked about that. Both of them sort of went together. Yeah, he was a class three A back of the year. Fly self flown to win the first state title in 2019. So he was a toy commitment for a long time. Yeah. And then you got Demarcus Thomas out of Saraland. This is another school in Mobile. These are Alabama players. They're yeah, high school players. Are going out of state. Tight end. He's going to Old Miss. Elaine Kiffin. Boy, he old oh, Kiffin came in. Do you think Kiffin got these guys late or what? Yeah, I think Kiffin came in and got a lot of guys late. Then the Carrius Harporn, Central Center Point. That's up in uh, Birmingham. Defense line is going to Florida Atlantic. Then you got uh, Jamichael Thompson, Clay Chauvel, wide receiver, going to Middle Tennessee. You got uh, Hamilton Baker. Out of Daphne, linebacker safety going to Army. Uh, um, then you got uh, Bailey Parsons out of Gardendale, long snapper going to Stanford. I tell you what, I wonder if they offered him <laughs> to be a uh, snapper at Stanford. That's a great education. I, I bet they're not giving up a scholarship for him. I, I bet. So that's all the uh, players that were, you know, really good players in the state of Alabama. Mike, that is amazing. How many is it? That's at least fifty. How many? How many would you? That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot of players. It's probably more than that. The one that, that shocked everybody was the guy from uh, uh, Calero, wasn't it? Yeah, but, you know, Alabama was was pretty much telling him, you know, if we get Jackson, you know, the great player out of Mississippi, that, you know, we're not going to offer you. So yeah. he kind of didn't have a choice. He wasn't going to wait on Alabama. And I think he kind of yeah. felt scorned. You know, he had committed to Alabama after his sophomore season. Well, let me tell you this yeah, about the a huge uh, Alabama fan. Well, I'll also tell you this about the young man out of Daleville who is a great player. And uh, I talked to Coach, uh, 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 to the Troy coaches about him. And uh, what it, what happened, they ended up giving the scholarship to the 6A back of the year that uh, team won the state championship in Georgia. They yeah. love this guy, yeah, Mike. They, that, yeah. they think that he is a, was a steal of getting him. And, uh, uh, you know, everybody... Thought that that uh, that he would wait or wait, and they pick him up in the second round. You know they do that with running backs. If you know they, they watch if so and so signs and whatever. Well, 
they came back on him, but Troy had already signed him, and uh, a lot of the big schools wanted him uh, badly, and uh, Troy got him, and he he said the great thing about him, he came to all of Troy's camps, and he never never uh, came off of his commitment. He, he, stuck, he stuck with his commitment, and that'll tell you right there about the character of a young man, and they say this is the real deal now, this, this running back uh, is going to be a good one, as is the quarterback. This is information out of Troy's recruiting class. They've got two quarterbacks. One of them, Mike, is 6'5". He weighs 230 pounds, and he was the most value, was the number one ranked quarterback in the United States Junior College. He was ranked number one in the Junior College uh, quarterbacks, Mike, uh, and come to Troy. Parker McNeil, I guess, Yeah, he's coming to Troy. He's already enrolled here at Troy. And another young man, if he's watching this morning, uh, uh, the quarterback from Leesburg, Georgia, uh, he, uh, uh, he, they won the state championship two years while he was there, and they were runner-up last year, or uh, lost in the, uh, uh, in the uh, fourth round. And uh, his name is uh, Rule. And he's coming to Troy. Tool. Tool. Tool excuse me. Tool. Uh, T T double O L E. Is that what it is? His name's Kyle Tool. Yeah. And they say he's the real deal. So we've got quite a. Well, and, well I, I think the quarterback race is wide open. I mean, there was nobody on that roster other than Caleb Barker they felt comfortable with last year. And if they tell you any different, they're they're lying because there's not one that those guys were brought in in a pressure situation to do anything. Yeah. I mean, when they right. came in, that was strictly mop-up duty. Well, and again, they've got uh, the Watson kid, who is a very good quarterback. Uh, he's, he's, I mean, is he a very good quarterback? We really haven't seen enough. <laughs> I've seen the practices. I've watched practice. Yeah, I tell you, I mean, in, ga in games, you know, you know, he's a six, he, barely see him. i tell you something about him that I've noticed. He's 6'4", and he can run. He's got good, good legs. The big You want a runner and a, and a passer? You want a guy that can, you know, hurt the defense different ways? Or do you want a guy that's going to be a drop-back passer and stand back there and just sling it? Yeah. You know, that's what you got to – I mean, you know, at Auburn, you know, when he was there, Stenham, you know, could run a, a little bit. You know, he wasn't a great runner, yeah. but he was more about, say, a pocket passer, a drop-back passer. Um, you know, I mean, of course, Cam Newton was, Cam Newton was there, you know, I think when – uh I don't know. Maybe you know he wasn't an analyst then. Uh, well, man, yeah, I guess he was an analyst. Maybe when Newt was there and Nick Marshall was yeah. there, uh -huh. you know, those are guys that could run and throw at Auburn. Exactly. Uh, it is eight oh four. Mullins kid, the Mullins kid, he coached at uh, at Southern Miss to put up all the pass records. That's the backup for Garoppolo for the Forty ers Yeah. He was just a passer. Yeah. Well, let me tell you this: the reason you don't hear much about the quarterback situation at Alabama is the kid from uh, uh, California is the real deal. And uh, I don't think they would. Uh, I, I don't think, I, I really, I don't think. I don't think he'll beat out Mac Jones after. Oh, he'll, he'll beat out Mac Jones. Jones. Mac Jones. I think, I, think he'll be, I think he'll eventually beat out Mac Jones, but I don't think he'll beat Mac Jones. I'll, I'll tell you, I'll there. tell you this. I'll tell you this. Troy's got two quarterbacks, maybe three, that are rated, that would be better than Mac Jones. Oh, my, my, my no stars Auburn. don't mean anything. He, uh, Man, Mac Jones played, I mean, 14 touchdowns, 1,400 yards. He threw for uh, two interceptions. Well, I, two I'm telling you, these two, two the, the, the two kid and the uh, other kid are, are better than he is. Listen, Troy's guys. If Mac Jones did throw two interceptions, pick sixes against Auburn, he, he, he's already a legend at Auburn. Yeah, well, he, you watch. He won't be but the quarterback. He threw two interceptions to the biggest, you know, hated rival. You know, I mean, yeah. that, that game that you can't throw one. Well, you know, he's completely one-dimensional. He's not a runner at all. And, uh, hey, uh, they, they've got they, the kid well, from you California. Got, you got Najee Harris at running back, and you got Devontae Smith, and you got – you know, the greatest probably receiver slash kick returner in the country, Jalen Waddle. And you got pretty much everybody coming back on the offensive line, um, except uh Wills who got false starts down 
me is about five a game. Yeah. Um, and they're projecting him as a top ten pick. I know. Can you believe that? They can't even stay on sides. Mike, what I'm saying, though. They're, they're going to be really good on offense, whoever the quarterback yeah, is. Yeah. That's what I'm getting at. Well, uh, uh, let me tell you this. Uh, they love this guy already. You, you, don't, you don't think Jones can throw the ball? I think he made some pretty good throws against Auburn and Michigan. Yeah, well, um. Uh, I'm just, uh, physically, I just don't know. I, he just doesn't impress me. I mean, he doesn't look athletic. I mean, he doesn't look athletic. He doesn't look like a, a guy that's, you yeah. know, real physical looking. But he's a guy that can definitely throw the football. He, he was a manager. He was a, uh, if they want a good manager, he'd be a good manager. Yeah, I mean, he's like a, he's like a McElroy. Yeah. Uh, probably, probably not as good as A.J. McCarron. But, you know, Alabama's big story is defense. You know, yeah. how good would the defense be with Dylan Moses being back? Well, that's. Telling sign today. Yeah. All right, they're running back. Uh, uh, they got Najee Harris back, who, you know, ended up all pro. Let, let me tell you, That's Harris is going. a that good guy, player. That, that guy shouldn't have come back. I mean, I thought he was going pro for sure. And then they got the number one running back in the, in the, in the country, Trey Sanders. They said that he was looking better in every running back before the season. He, he tears his ACL. Now he's back. So yeah. I mean, the running back situation is going to be better than ever. And then you got another one, too, the kid from California that was ranked number one in, uh, when he came out, wasn't he? What's his name? Uh, that, that was Najee Harris. He was number one. All right, who was the other kid? Uh, well, number one is Bryce Young, the quarterback this year. Yeah. But, but now, uh, Alabama, yeah, Alabama. And they got the Brian Robinson kid out of Hillcrest. Yeah. He played great this year, but he's not bad. All right, think of this. As good as Alabama has been with the running back situation and the, the throwing situation, now and finally – when is the last time you can remember that they had a premium runner uh, at quarterback? At Alabama? Yeah. Blake Sims was the closest I can remember a guy that could really run. All right, now, see, that was a pretty good way to go. See, just think of the new dimension Alabama has now. Now, and they can't do it with that other kid, is what I'm saying. Uh, they've got a guy that, that can hurt you running and throwing. I mean, Tua, Tua could run hurt. a little bit better. Hurt, hurt, if Hurt could have thrown, he would have been the uh, thrown better. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'd have to say Hurts. What am I talking about? Hurts was definitely the last runner. What am yeah, I talking about? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, he could run it, but he was not a great thrower. But, uh, you know, yeah, it was Hurts, adequate. Hurts, you know, throwing got better when he was in Oklahoma last year. And... Now hear this, ladies and gentlemen. Now hear this. Hurt will probably go in the third round. What do you think? They're saying right now play four for fifth. Do you know... Well, the best thing is, though, for Hurts, though, is, is probably for him to go free agent and get in a yeah. system where uh, he can yeah. pick where he wants to go. Let me say, let me tell you another thing. You know, you hear hear of all these kids uh, that are not, decide not to play in a bowl game because they're afraid that they they should have they get hurt or they would lose their status a little bit. Hurt lost his status in the bowl game. He went. He lost a lot of money by playing in the bowl game. What do you mean, senior bowl? Yeah, uh, well, the senior bowl and the regular bowl. What, what do you mean? He had to play in the regular bowl during the playoffs. Well, yeah, you're right. Well, well, uh, well, well, yeah, you're right about that. But at the same time, the senior bowl, uh, uh, did he do anything in the senior bowl? I mean, I think he had a decent week. I don't think it was anything impressive. The guy that uh, everybody raved about was uh, Her Herbert, the uh Oregon quarterback apparently was the star of the senior bowl. Yeah. It went up big time. Oh, it did? And who else did well? I tell you what, though. I mean, I watched Oregon play. In some games, they blow people out. Some games, they play people, you know, I mean, just right down the wire. And then if, if Wisconsin doesn't fumble the ball four times in that Rose Bowl, Wisconsin beats Oregon. Yeah. So, you know, I watched Oregon get beat by uh, Arizona State that night. And, uh, you know, I mean, of course, you know, they go on and just blow out Utah. Of course, Utah wasn't near as good as people made it out to be. They lost to USC, and then Oregon yeah. was about. Yeah, they were. They were. Uh, they Texas, turned out to be a disappointment. They were a disappointment yeah, Texas, at the end. Texas had won seven games, and they beat about thirty-five yeah. points. In the Texas board. was good at the end, and look out for Texas next year. The quarterback's coming back, isn't he? Yeah, but I tell you what, Tom Herman, man, he's talking about fan base that's not happy. Boy, they they thought they were going to be like in the playoffs by yeah. now, and he's really struggled. You know, he was the he was the guy that LSU wanted. Actually offered him the job. Aliva thought he was going to take it, and then Tom Herman decided at the last minute to, uh, you know, pass up LSU and go to Texas. And 
then of course you know LSU ends up bringing in Orger on because he was already on staff, and LSU's got to feel pretty good about that decision now. I want to mention Bearfields and Ozark, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the best men's store in Alabama. Believe you me, uh, Bearfields and Ozark, uh, men and women's clothing, first quality clothing that you'll find today at Bearfields. Peter Millar down there, and I, I've got a Peter Millar jacket, uh, a little one four six. Oh yeah. I was wearing that out in Vegas. You talking about couple nice clothing, Peter Millar brands. If they sell that, that's just about as high quality. Well, that, as you that, they do, and he sells and and they. Thing about it, they uh, they they'll uh, tailor your suit or your garment that needs tailoring to. I tell you what, I your get a tailored suit bad. Every time I go shopping, I can't figure out what I wear anymore. Well, uh, you've lost what? Twenty pounds? How long? How many pounds you lost? Uh, I lost about seventeen, but uh, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! About ten back when I was out there. It's a uh, hard, a hard place to stay on and die. You're talking about. Some of the best chefs. In, in, in all right, out of all the places you ate out there, which one was your favorite? I mean, we went to famous Joe's Seafood and Steak. Uh, it's a uh, also known for their stone crab. It's out of Miami. You know, the, 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 the original location is in Miami, Florida. And uh, the menu is just unbelievable for our seafood and steak. And, you know, of course, the sides are amazing and stuff like that. But, I mean, that place was like, you know, your waiters is all in like tuxedos, it's like white cloth and like, <laughs> you know, they bring you an actual wet towel to uh, to clean your hands with and it uh, yeah. <laughs> comes with a wet towel and also has a, a little uh, plate with lemons, so he squeezes the lemons in your hands and then gives you the wet towel type yeah. stuff. Did you go up the Eiffel Tower? Did you go to France? Nah, I've, I've done all that before, uh, but uh... They've got a good buffet there that was, uh, I always yeah, like. You know, this is the only casino I think I've ever been in, um, Park MGM, that has a hotel within the hotel. So there's a Nomad Hotel, which is like a boutique hotel within the hotel. And, like, these bars and restaurants are just, like, so nice. I mean, everything's just, like, you know, the finest, you know, lighting and, you know, couches and chairs and tables and stuff. And it's just, like, you know, so comfortable. But, like, the actual hotel within a hotel, and then they had one of the best steakhouses ever, my buddy told me that we missed out on on Friday night. Um, this place called Bazette's or something like that. Uh, steakhouse. It's like a legendary steakhouse out of Chicago. that opened a uh, steakhouse in Vegas there at the casino. And he told me this guy had been all over the shoot, all over the country, all over the world, and loved steaks. He says the best steak he's ever had. <laughs> That's why our reservations were supposed to I be. like Longhorns. <laughs> Baldy and Ribeye. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. They had an Italian eatery called uh, Italy, and it was basically like walking through Italy, but it was all like covered up. It was kind of like a mall for, full of Italian restaurants and, yeah. and like you know bars and wine shops and stuff like that. Of course, my wife loved it because you know she loves charcuterie boards with cheese and and you know prosciutto and salami <laughs> and stuff like that. And, he married a Mountain Brook girl. <laughs> When I last time I went out there, we stayed at the MGM. Uh, I want to say how many thousand rooms? Uh, I don't know. MGM was right across the way. I mean, it's huge. Stage. It is huge, uh, uh, and of course that's where they have a lot of the events. I reckon they use their arena more than anybody's out there. What's the other popular arena? Uh, you know, well, uh, I mean, I mean, T-Mobile is the actual arena in town. Yeah. It holds twenty thousand. I'd say MGM. As far as boxing probably holds about yeah. twelve thousand, maybe. Speaking of boxing, that big big heavyweight uh, championship. Yeah, Wilder, uh, Wilder uh, from Tuscaloosa, Monte Wilder. Um, he was on every billboard there, getting ready to fight Fury. Yeah. yeah. Now Fury, uh, they, they fought. They, they did fight, yeah, Fury, and it was Fury's a draw. Yeah, Fury's an Englishman, six nine. Yeah. And Wilder knocked him out. Oh yeah, and he came back though, did he? Well, well, they said the ref. Basically did a standing yeah, kick. I heard that. I heard that. And I think, I think <laughs> Fury had knocked Wilder down 
that fight too. But Wilder, they thought had won, and, you know, on points, but it ended up being. But the, you know what? Uh, Let me tell you how business that's works. The only, that's the only uh, blemish on Rob yeah. Wilder's record. He's never lost. Well, uh, I'll, I'll say this too about him. Uh, this is all about money. Just think what what kind of money they gonna they gonna get on a on a. a uh, yeah, he'll get, he'll get fight. forty million at least. Yeah, he'll be set for life. Yeah, you know, when I was in Tuscaloosa and, and I worked there before. You know, I was in and out of the bars and the restaurants, and uh, he was the Bud Light delivery guy. Oh, was he? <laughs> and I see this big six seven guy bringing in kegs. <laughs> and uh, I told the people, I was like, I was like, is that a basketball player? I was like, I was like, yeah. what store is that guy? They said, no, he's like an amateur boxer. And, yeah. Never been beaten, you know, he's in Tuscaloosa, and, you know, he's got a chance to make it big yeah. one day, and I was just like, man, this is crazy. You know, your buddy did real well in Dubai. Uh, in fact, I think he got a, a couple of million for being in second, didn't he? Yeah, I mean, Mickelson, I was so disappointed yesterday. I was on the plane, and Delta has, you know, the little tablets where you can watch all the movies, and you can watch, you know, TV shows, and then, of course, they have... This network, so you're, you know, 30 So I guarantee you, know. you won't get that with uh, Southwest, Mike. And you're watching, uh, so I'm watching uh, the uh, XFL, I'm watching a football game, New York's playing somebody, uh, I think the Orlando team, and then I'm watching uh, the PGA Golf at Pebble Beach, I told my wife, I was like, this is the greatest playing experience I've ever had, I've got my little headphones <laughs> on, and Nicholson's at 19 under, and this, uh... Nick Taylor guy is a 21 under. I'm like, oh, Nicholson's going to come back and beat him. I was like, you know, Nicholson's a legend at Pebble yeah, Beach. Yeah, oh, yeah. Had won last year, and they're showing in the highlights, you know, Nicholson apparently, like, chipped in three balls on Saturday uh, from around the green. Like, this was making unbelievable shots after unbelievable shots. And next thing I know, I watched two holes, and Nicholson doubles, and then he bogeys, and I'm just like, he's down by five. It's over. And sure enough, he ended up finishing third. Because Strilby came in there, uh, who, uh, who I guess is married to a guy, I mean, married to a girl from uh, <laughs> from uh, Tuscaloosa. And, uh, you know, Strillman does a lot of golf charity events in Alabama. He played at Duke. He comes all the way back and beats Mickelson for second. You know, winning second was $850 yeah. million. I mean, not $850 million, 850000 Yeah. And Mickelson... Uh, had a seven-foot uh, putt to tie for second on um, 18, which is an easy birdie hole because it's a par five. And he misses that, pars, and he only wins 538000 Yeah. Well, he's got... The, the big thing about it, though... How, how much did you say... How much you tell us the other day that Mickelson's worth? Oh, shoot. It was like over $100 million. No, I, no, I think you were... Yeah, well, over $100 million. Yeah. yeah, I think it was $250 million, something like that. Yeah. Well, it's supposed to be a bunch. I know that. I mean, the thing is, though, with Mickelson, though, you know, he's trying to qualify for the U.S. Open. You know, he's, he's out of the top 60 now, so I think that put him back in the top 60. And the, if you're top 60 or above, you qualify for the U.S. Open. Uh-huh. Of course, he's never won the U.S. Open. I mean, he's <laughs> a player of all time. But, I mean, boy, you go through a lot of highs and lows with Mickelson. My goodness. I mean, he is a birdie machine and a bogey machine. How do you like his new body? His new body. His new body. Well, they, on the last hole, he hit, he, his drive went 318 yards. I mean, it's good that he, he's lost 30 pounds at 49 years old. That's amazing. Yeah. Of course, I'm sure he's got every personal trainer. He's probably yeah. got, you know, his own chefs. And okay. I know, he's got his own, I know he's got his own airplane. All right. Now, this is uh, unreal. You lost 17 pounds in how many days? Uh, I lost 17 pounds about a month. In about a month on the Atkins diet. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, I did the Atkins diet. I mean, the only thing I, I, I do, because i got to have something for energy, is I, I still do a little peanuts and I do a little pecans. But now, you're not a big egg either, except maybe an omelet or what? I'm a huge egg eater. What are you talking about after the show? Okay. I'm going to the Sunnyside Grill to get a huge omelet. Oh, that's right. You love, love omelets. Omelets is a perfect uh, meal on a... Uh, uh, yeah, I'll go there and get, I'll get, a, I'll get a bacon... Egg and cheese omelet with some mushrooms and onions on it. It's great. How many eggs will you put in this omelet? Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. I'll tell Nader Glenn to make me a four egg omelet. A four egg omelet. (laughs) That's a pretty good meal. That's all I'll eat, though. But now, you're not a tomato guy at all, are you? Nah. I mean, I'm a. Tomatoes are. I mean, I'm not a tomato guy, but I I love, like, 
salsa and stuff like that. Yeah. All right, now, you, but you can eat uh, all the I meat. Love, I, love, I love fried green tomatoes. You can eat all the salad and all the meat that you want, can't you? Yeah, I mean, you can eat all the salad, you know, if you want a salad and you want to get, you know, cheese on it and bacon bits and dressing, you know. Yeah, you, can, all, you uh, can eat cheese, can't you? Yeah, you can eat all the cheese you want. Yeah. But well, the biggest thing is just vegetables, you know. You got your green beans, you got your squash, you got your zucchini. My wife does a really good meal with stuffed peppers. She gets stuffed peppers, and, uh, you know, you put chicken in it, like with enchilada sauce or... We're talking about the Atkins you know. diet. Mike lost 17 pounds in how many days? Uh, I guess it was about four and a half weeks, something like that. Did you even exercise at all? Yeah, I tried, but the weather was real bad down here. It was cold and it was raining a lot, so, I mean, I went from doing, like, four But, but what we're saying is days. if you do the Atkins diet right, you can lose a lot of weight. Your sister lost, what, no, tell us how many pounds, most of the Atkins, didn't she? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much Rebecca's lost. And she looks wonderful. She looks wonderful, no question yeah, about it. The issue, though, is, is, is you got to try to stay away, you know, from your wines and your beers and stuff as well, you know, I'm... I'm actually a wine rep, so it's kind of tough when I have to come to the <laughs> I've got, I've got why, why is, well, listen, why is um, wine bad for you? Well, I mean, well the Atkins sugar. died. A lot of sugar. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's one of those things where uh, it's a great diet, but I'm not going to lie, it's not the greatest. I mean, the, the, the best diet in the world, you know, your energy just kind of affected a little bit. You know, you definitely... Yeah. You definitely, uh, energy level-wise, is kind of tough, so... Mike, I want to mention a little bit about... That's one thing that, uh, I did better this time. I usually do Atkins on... I still do fried, but I didn't do any fried this time. I think no that's fried. why I lost more weight. But you could if you wanted to, couldn't you? Well, you're not really supposed to, but a lot of people do. Yeah. It's just, you know... But the omelet, the omelet, you can eat an omelet, uh, 24 hours a day, and that's, that's a good, uh, yeah. good meal to have on the Atkins diet. I mean, you can do a lot of easy stuff like grilled sausage is great. You can dip that in mustard. That's really good. And then you got... How about mushrooms? Can you eat mushrooms? Uh, yeah, all the mushrooms you want. Yeah, that's why I now, eat all the mushrooms. We're talking about staying away from everything that's white and uh, and, any, and everything. Listen, stay away from everything that's grown underground. Uh, yeah, have you know, ever noticed that? The thing is staying away from bread. Bread and chips. You know, staying away from Ice creams and how about hummus? How about hummus? Nah, you can't do hummus. Hummus would uh, uh, yeah, oh yeah, you can't. I can't. I can't do it. Just chickpeas. Yeah, I can't do that. Yeah, uh huh. And of course, uh, you know, it, it's effective. You going back on it now? Yeah, I'm going back on it today. I'll see how I do. It's been tough. Yeah, I'm sure. Cause <laughs> I'm uh, coming off, yeah, you know, a little bit of a, uh, you know, I guess uh. Kind of just did it a little bit, eating a lot of bad things again back in Vegas. So. Yeah. Well, uh, you, uh, you're you off vacation. It's time to get back to work and get back to your diet and uh, whatever, and I'm proud yeah, my of girls, you. Uh, my girls are already at school. My wife dropped them off, so that's good. That's right. I want to mention Pike Little Arts, Pike. My mother-in-law, she came down and stayed with them for four nights, yeah. so that was good. Your mama helped out a little bit, too. Uh, I want to mention uh, uh, in uh Girls basketball in the Alabama Independent Schools. Uh, uh, Pike Liberal Arts uh, plays Morgan Academy at six o'clock. Uh, that is coming up uh, uh, on February the twelfth. Uh, boys, Pike Liberal might just uh, uh, beat Springwood eighty to sixty-seven, and they're in the still in in the run. They they play. Uh, uh, yeah, but, eight, I think, is what yeah but listen who they who they got to play is is uh, success unlimited who's 11 and four pikes 14 and 10 but they're playing real good right now uh of course the top team in the state or two top teams are Tuscaloosa and Lee Scott and they're both uh at 17 and four four so uh those are the two teams to beat and they'll play uh, on February the 15th at the Crampton Bowl facility. Uh, I was just looking down Lakeside is still in, in girls. Uh, also, uh, the uh, boys 2A has uh, uh, Lakeside, uh, well, excuse me, they're not in there. Uh, nobody from this area is in that uh, part of the championship, but 
all this is going on uh, uh, at the uh, Crampton Bowl uh, facility, Mike. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those type of things where, uh, you know, basketball starting to heat up as well. We're getting closer to March. Um, of course, Troy, you know, starting baseball. I guess baseball start what? They start Friday. Friday. They start Friday afternoon. Uh, they, uh, they've got a four-game series with uh, uh, Northern Kentucky. That should be fun. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I think it's going to be a really good year for uh, Coach Smart. Of course, uh you know, they got a lot of guys coming back and brought in a bunch of good recruits. So uh, that's always fun to watch. Now, one thing about baseball, if they do make the regionals, they'll go into June. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I was looking at some boys, seven a uh, around here. Do you know that uh, Robert E. Leo Montgomery is 29 and one, and they play in a tough league, and they play in a tough league too. I wonder if they're only lost at the Mount Brook. Well, I don't know. They've got Mountain Brook with two losses. They're 29 yeah, and two. Yeah, Mountain Brook plays a national schedule now. Yeah, but uh, so that will be the be uh, some big ones. Those games will, uh, you know, Troy gave up the, that playoff. They could have had it. Uh, they were offered it and they turned it down to have a regional. Yeah, those are always some of the uh, my fondest memories working in the athletic department. Is back when I used to have to be uh, in charge of. Uh, Working those events, I was uh, running around all over the place. I'd be on the court before the game and then trying to help people find seats during the games. I remember one time I escorted Pat Summit to her seat. Yeah. I was there, Tennessee coach. And then uh, Carver, Jeff Davis played, and we had people going through the bathroom. Uh, oh, it was unbelievable. The bathroom windows because it was a fire hazard. Yeah. And the marshals had to come in and basically stop the crowd. And I think yeah. there was another thousand people trying it, to get into the game. It was unreal. It was unreal. Uh, yeah, and, you know, was not not long game. after that, not long after that, Troy started making plans for the new arena. Now that's uh, that was one of the Sartain Hall's uh, probably greatest games. that wasn't a Troy game. Was uh, when uh, I mean, my goodness, Jeff Davis and in, in, in Phoenix City was yeah, like watching. That's, that's right. Games. That's right. They had the great player that went on to Alabama. You know, and yeah, so good. Um, but uh, yeah, I, mean, uh, I enjoy being back. I'm glad I'm back, uh, back here in Grayton. It's been, a, been quite a journey since Thursday, and uh, hopefully I'll start feeling back to normal here, here in a couple of days. Man, it's time to go back to work, and uh, we wish you a good day, and uh, we appreciate yeah, you know, calling. Have a great day. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one. Mike Amos calling in from uh, uh, Northwest Florida and uh, the, the beautiful beaches down there. Hope you've enjoyed our show. Uh, we, of course, we're talking about what's coming up in sports. And, of course, uh, high school basketball tournaments will be starting very soon. And, uh, or they are already started. And uh, we'll be keeping you abreast of all those games and where they're located in our area. I hope that you enjoyed it. See you tomorrow. I've been working for this my whole life. 